is a strong fiscal conservative. We endorsed Martin for the mayor's race. And uh, Martin is the kind of mayor that if he is concerned about what we might think about something, he calls me, he calls Ernie, and we talk. And if he thinks he's gonna have a problem with an issue, we talk about it. And I, I respect Martin Hines very much. I know that he loves the city of Tyler. I know that he loves Smith County and wants to do the right thing. Unlike some other local elected officials I know. And by the way, let me just tell you, I, I have, because uh, I've had some people ask me as I walked in the door. The investigation into Smith County Commissioner's Court is an active investigation. I talked to the investigators last week. It's an active investigation, and I'm not going to disclose what we talked about. But it's an active investigation. I will not be saying a whole heck of a lot about their budget and their payroll, their pay increase questions this time because we have an open investigation. So I'm not going to be in the commissioner's court telling them, but I will tell you this. Grassroots America is open for business for people who want to run for local office who want to do the right thing. If you believe in open meetings, if you believe the people of Smith County ought to know what business is going on, if you believe that they should be public servants and not people who come before you and say they deserve pay raises just simply because they woke up today and decided they felt like they needed one, I'm going to tell you something. Public service is hard work. I've been on that side of the table. It is hard work. But it does not coronate you to be a different class of people. It just simply does not. So I'm going to introduce you to a man who doesn't get a paycheck for doing the public service he does, and that would be the mayor of Tyler, Mr. Martin Hines. Well, um, and that is true. We, we do it as a volunteer because we love our community. All our city council and the mayor are a volunteer job. <clears throat> and uh, uh, in a budget hearing we had earlier uh, uh, presented by the, the city manager, uh, there was an item from the traffic engineer. And, and this item is that we are still in the age of computers. We're still going out and manually changing every time we need to change a school zone uh, at the city. Uh, uh, anytime there's a holiday, we have to manually send someone out to go change all the uh, the, the school zone um, flashing yellow lights. And so uh, to increase our efficiency, the engineer and the city manager put on the budget this year money to, uh, to automate that system where we don't have to spend the staff time to do it every time, every, uh, uh, each, each change of the school zone. And so they were talking about some sort of antenna or apparatus they had to put on each of one of the the school zone signs. And I'm like, well, just, just make sure they don't have any cameras on it. Because we're not going to do that. So, yeah. so, uh, and uh, yes, I, we really appreciate, I appreciate uh, my, my long relationship with uh, Joanne. And, and I do call her when we have issues that become uh, something that uh, we want to work through at the city and talk about. And uh, she talks about this little power of persuasion. Did she just mention that? I think it's a pretty big power of persuasion. Uh, and, but also Bob Brewer and Ernie Clark, uh, before he had the problem with his knee, uh, and Richard Blake for a long time, comes to each one of the city council meetings and listens to everything we do and we appreciate that citizen interaction. That's probably, uh, uh, those three guys are probably the most consistent people that come listen to what we do. And I appreciate that because we really work at being uh, an open organization. I mean, anytime you have a question, anytime you wanna know anything, we really pride ourselves on not only being the lowest tax rate in the state of Texas, but we also pride ourselves in being up, open and honest to any sort of questions. And so, and I can assure you, uh, these guys ask it on, on your behalf and we appreciate that very much. 
So today we've been asked to talk about uh, water utilities. Um, and so uh, we had a proposal brought to us uh, by city staff and that will be made uh, by Greg Morgan. Greg Morgan uh, has been the administrator of the Tyler Water Utilities for how many years now? Uh, I've been with Tyler Water Utilities 20 years. 20 years, he, he's, he's been with the organization and he leads that department. Our city manager is new. Uh, and you, you're going you're gonna to use this, right? Yes. You're going to come up here? Yes. Okay. Uh, our city manager is new. He's been with us one year. Uh, he came to us from Missouri City. Uh, and we spent about six months as a, as a city council, an extreme amount of time, making sure that the person that was selected for that position had similar points of view that we had and understands that the community, through their elected officials, pushed us to be honest, open, and physically conservative uh, as a city government. And he has displayed that since he's been here. He displayed it in the interviews. We are very comfortable uh, and very proud that uh, Ed Broussard has joined our community. Uh, the year after, Mark McDaniel, the previous city manager, was city manager in the state of Texas. Ed Broussard uh, received that same honor. Wow. So we have very good quality people that want to come to Tyler because we are successful as a community. And with the lowest tax rate, we are a definite model uh, in the state. So we, attract, we attracted, I think, 50 to 60 excellent candidates. But we narrowed it down to Ed, and we've been very proud with uh, how he's operated the city government. So with this, <laughs> you never needed, you, you know. uh, and so at this time, we'll have uh, Greg Morgan make the presentation, and then uh, we'll open it up to questions uh, on water utilities uh, and uh, anything else you want to talk about and ask. But first, we'll Greg, come on up and do your presentation. Thank you, Mayor Hunt. Uh, first off, let me thank you all for giving us the opportunity to come out here. Uh, we appreciate uh, meeting with you all, presenting this presentation to you to kind of give you a view of what we have proposed for Tidal Water Utilities in fiscal year 16. Uh, and this is a presentation that we made to City Council back on June 4th in a special workshop. And uh, hopefully, uh, it'll, hopefully it's a clear presentation. Uh, there we go. Uh, for those of you who don't know or may not be aware of it, Tyler Water Utilities is an enterprise fund operation of the City of Tyler. What that means is we operate as a business. We do not receive tax support. Uh, Tyler Water Utilities, uh, both our operation and maintenance expenses as well as our capital improvements are funded through the revenue generated through the sale of water and the collection and treatment of wastewater. We have uh, right at 33,000 water connections, water customers. We have 31,500 sanitary sewer customers. We maintain 694 miles of water distribution system. 633 miles of sanitary sewer mains, and we operate four treatment plants. Two of those are water for the treatment and distribution of uh, potable drinking water, and two of those are wastewater treatment plants. Our sources for water are, we have two different sources. Uh, on surface water, we draw water out of the Lake Tyler, Lake Tyler East, system. I call that a system because while they're two separate lakes, they are connected by a channel and we only have one pump station on the two lakes. Uh, we can draw 34 million gallons a day out of the Lake Tyler system. In addition to that, we have uh, water, we take water out of Lake Palestine. We currently can draw 30 million gallons a day out of Lake Palestine but we have the contract rights to bring another 30 million gallons, which would get us to an ultimate
production capabilities out of Lake Palestine of 60 million gallons per day. One of the critical things about that is we are drawing water, our surface water is drawn from two drainage basins. Uh, Lake Tyler and Lake Tyler East are in the Angelina River Basin, and so we draw water out of that one, but we also draw water out of the Natchez River Basin. Uh, as you get further down stream, they become one river. Uh, they combine to become one river, the Natchez River, but in our area, they are two separate two separate rivers, two separate drainage basins. So an impact in one drainage basin doesn't impact our water, our sole water source. We're diversified on that. In addition, we, to the surface water, we have 12 deep water wells that are founded in the Carrizo Wilcox sand, and we can produce 8 million gallons of water per day out of those wells. That brings our ultimate total water supply to 102 million gallons per day production capability. Um, that will, based on the planning efforts associated with the city of Tyler's comprehensive plans, that will meet the needs not only of the city of Tyler, but Smith County as a whole through the year 2084. Y'all may remember the drought back in 2011 time frame when it was so hot, so dry, water was going down, lakes were all being depleted, uh, cities were scrambling to figure out where they were going to get water. Uh, thanks to the planning efforts of our current and previous councils, we have a safe, secure water supply that will not only meet our needs for today, but well into the future. Uh, Tidal Water Utilities has a AAA bond rating on our senior uh, lien debt. That is an amazing fact in and of itself. Uh, that's a better bond rating than the U.S. government has. Uh, we, on, our, on our subordinate lien debt, we have a AAA plus. That is one step below the AAA bond rating. Uh, we envision that the implementation of the plan that we have laid out here today will position us to move our total bond rating to a AAA bond rating in the near future. Master planning is a key part of what we do. Uh, back in 2007, as part of what was known as the Tyler 21 Comprehensive Plan, now it's known as Tyler First, uh, we developed master plans for both the water in the wastewater system. Those master plans look at not only the city of Tyler, but our five mile ETJ, and gives us the opportunity to plan what we need to do for the future. There were 51 water projects and 77 sanitary sewer projects identified as part of that master planning process. Um, here is a map that shows some of the projects that we have done. Now, I'm, I'm getting old, so I can't really read that, so I'm going to turn my back to you here for just a minute. But this map right here shows the projects that we completed between 2005 and 2009. There are 14 projects shown on here that total over $8.5 8 million. And you can see they're in various areas of the city. Uh, this is a map that shows the projects that we completed between 2009 and 2015. Uh, there are 33 projects that are shown on here that totaled over $27 million. Uh, the next map that I have shows uh, another 30, 34 projects totaling $8.1 million. The previous two maps are projects that we funded out of our capital budget. Uh, these projects shown on this map are 34 capital improvement projects that we funded out of the operations budget, not the capital budget, but the operations budget. And uh, this last slide right here is, identifies eight projects that we did between 2014 and 2015 that were not identified or not brought forth out of the master plan, the projects that, that popped up on the radar screen and needed to be dealt with. 
There are eight projects totaling over $13 million here. One of these projects is the Lake Tyler Dam. Uh, as y'all may recall from reading the paper and watching the news, over the last couple of years, we've done a rehabilitation project on the Lake Tyler Dam. That cropped up after our master planning efforts and was not included in any of our master plans. That project cost $10 million. Uh, total cost, opera, uh, design, and construction. Uh, we were able to fund that project, as I'll speak to in a minute, out of cash reserves primarily and some bond money that we have, unused bond money that we have. Um, how do we pay for these projects? Okay, first and foremost, the majority of the projects that I have just spoke about that are shown on those maps were paid for using cash generated from the sale of water and the collection and treatment of wastewater. Basically, this, they were funded out of our cash flow and our revenue stream. Another uh, method that we use to fund projects for tidal water utilities is revenue bonds. Uh, we use those to fund projects and groups of similar type projects that are anticipated to cost more than can be paid for directly with cash. A lot of the projects that Tyler Water Utilities undertakes uh, are long-term in planning, but they're also very expensive projects. To build a, to build a water treatment plant is to build another 30 million a gallon a day water treatment plant to utilize all the water available to us from Lake Palestine will cost $30 million. Uh, it's not possible to generate that much money to be able to pay for that kind of a project in a timely manner. So we do use revenue bonds as a source for cash. And then last uh, but not least is a combination of the two. As I just said, the Lake Tyler Dam rehabilitation project that we did. We funded, it was a total $10 million project. We funded 6.5 million out of cash reserves and 3.5 million out of available bond funds. This one's a little hard for me to read in the back, but this is just an example of our 10-year capital improvement plan. Um, I've been with Tyler Water Utilities for 20 years. Uh, 15 years ago, we maintained a 20-year capital improvement plan. But as we have moved forward with the Lake Palestine project for which we did sell revenue bonds, uh, the bond rating agency to ask us to cut that back to a 10-year plan because it was more practical and more representative of actual things that we would be doing. So we did, uh, we maintain a 10-year capital plan I've got the whole plan here, but it is also available online at the City of Tyler uh, website. You can see here that this uh, plan is broken down, down by departments, so we have the projects that we need for the water distribution, uh, a separate list from the projects we need for water treatment, wastewater collection, wastewater treatment, and so forth. Uh, that's the total uh, project, our uh, 10 year capital improvement plan. We have 98 identified projects on our current 10-year capital improvement plan that total $73.4 million. If you go back to those maps that I showed you and you look at what we did over the last 10 years, we spent approximately that over the last 10 years. We anticipate spending that as we go forward because maintaining and operating a water and wastewater collection system is an ongoing continuous process. Uh, on this plan, we have identified 10 Texas Commission on Environmental Quality regulatory projects that total $14.3 million. And there are also 12 EPA related regulatory projects totaling over $13 million. Those are projects that have schedules um, the TCEQ projects are associated with the water system, the potable water system, and the EP, EPA regulatory projects are related to the wastewater system. How do we prioritize these projects when we, when we have a list that goes out and has that many projects on it? Uh, we sat down on a quarterly basis with the department leaders and Tyler Water Utilities, the, the people who are actually the field, what I'd call the field commanders, out doing the operations, keeping the system up, maintaining the system, keeping the plants running, and we go through this project list. 
and we review it from the following criteria. First and foremost, we look at regulatory compliance to ensure that we are protecting the health and safety of the public. Uh, so that is, of course, the most critical thing we do uh, is address regulatory compliance. The second thing we'll look at is available funding. You know, is there currently funding available? And if not, when would funding be available? And we may take a uh, lower cost project and move it up a few years and move a more expensive one out just to be able to manage the funding of the projects. We'll also look at new service, the extension of lines to see if we can have an opportunity and what it's going to do with regards to expanding the customer base as well as providing service to areas that may not have service today. And then uh, last but not least, we look at levelized expenditures. We try to maintain a level expenditure annually with regards to our capital improvements, and that helps us maintain a rate, a kind of a level rate structure. You don't see peaks and valleys, extreme peaks and valleys in, the, in our rate structure for what we charge for water and wastewater services. Uh, Tyler Water Utilities has a two-part rate structure. Uh, the first part is a minimum charge. Uh, this is based upon your meter size and includes 2,000 gallons of water, but it is paid whether you use any water or not. Uh, this is a minimum charge, meter charge, whatever you want to call it. It's collected monthly. And right now it generates about somewhere between 18 and 20% of our revenue. Uh, the second part of our rate is a volumetric rate. Once you pass the 2,000 gallons consumption, we charge for water and wastewater on a 1,000 gallon incremental basis, and we utilize a declining block rate. Because of the availability of water that we have and the ample supply, we're able to provide water in such a way that the more that is consumed, the less you will pay for it. Uh, we also cap our residential sanitary sewer charges at 10,000 gallons. This is how we address the variation between normal domestic usage and the increased summer residential irrigation usage so that you don't pay sewer on your irrigation water. Rate increases is something that we do on a regular basis. Uh, this is a list of the rate increases that we have done since uh, 2006, over the last 10 years. I think there are seven total rate increases on here. Uh, all of them are single digit percentage rate increases. Uh, that's something unique to us. So most cities do uh, have situations where they have to do double digit rate increases. And that goes back to that levelized expenditure that I was speaking about. That by managing that, we're able to do a better job on uh, controlling the increases that we see. Uh, if you look at these, most of these rate increases are consistent both in water and sewer across the board. Like in 2007, it was a 7% increase. In 2010, it was a 6% increase. Uh, except for years uh, 13 and 14, if you look at those, they're skewed more towards the wastewater system. Prior to 2013, the uh, wastewater system was being subsidized by the water revenue. By making these offsetting uh, rate increases as we did, uh, seven versus two and 13, and just a 5% sewer only increase in 2014, we were able to make sanitary sewer or wastewater uh, system uh, self-supporting. Now, in 2014, we are over the past couple of years, we have seen some shortfalls in our revenue based on the revenue projections that were used for the creation of our budget. In 2014, we incurred a $1.4 million revenue shortfall on water sales and treatment of wastewater. And right now, today, we're estimating that in 2015, we will have a $2.7 million shortfall in our revenue. Uh, we're able to, I need to say right up front, that we're able to manage that by 
adjusting capital projects, delaying the start of capital projects, pushing capital projects off, and also tightening our belts, looking at our operation, forecasting our expenditures on a monthly basis so that we're managing the money that we do bring in in the most efficient manner to ensure that we can meet the needs of the citizens of Tyler. Um, the revenue shortfalls are occurring though, uh, despite the rate increases that we've had because of reduced volumetric sales. Uh, as you all are aware, over the last couple of years, we have had some unique rain patterns this year we had an unusually high amount of rain up through July, so we're, and we're still receiving rain. Um, if you go back and look at 2014, the amount of rain that we received was not unusual. We were just a few inches uh, off of our normal annual rainfall. But what made uh, 2014 unique was the distribution pattern of that rainfall. We're gonna get to a chart here in a minute to show where we got six inches in July uh, in 2014. Uh, what we saw in 2014 was rainfall patterns where we were receiving a measurable rain event about every seven to 10 days. Uh, that is outstanding way to maintain your landscaping, water your yard. That offsets to the utility in that where we're anticipating selling water for that purpose, but we didn't sell it. So our reduced sales are due to the timely and excessive rains and the elasticity of that demand that's associated with the volumetric usage. Uh, these shortfalls are putting extreme pressure on tidal water utilities with our cash position. Uh, we did build up cash reserves through the years, through the drought years that we've experienced here recently. Uh, but as I said earlier, we took six and a half million dollars of our cash reserves and made the improvements to Lake Tyler Dam. Uh, at the time we were doing it, it was more proactive. We identified issues that were not causing structural problems with the dam but we were proactive and went ahead and fixed them at the cost of $10 million. Um, the good thing we did, the rains that we received between January and July of 2015 uh, could have had a major impact on Lake Tyler Down had we not performed the rehabilitation that we did. We'll never know whether it would or wouldn't have but the potential was there that it could have caused a catastrophic issue with the Lake Tyler Dam. Fortunately, we had moved forward with the project in a proactive manner and ensured that nothing happened to the dam. This is a slide that shows, uh, compares our budgeted to actual revenues for both 2014, 2015. You can see how we lay it out and we compare it to rainfall here. Uh, the one which would be on your left is the uh, 2014 and shows the $1.4 million shortfall, $1.45 million shortfall. Uh, the one on the right is the 2015 projections. The numbers through July are actual revenue numbers that we have seen for the purposes of projecting where we're going to be. We have made the assumption that we would sell uh, the amount of water that we had originally projected and forecasted for both August and September. And based upon meeting budget, forecasted budget for revenue in those two months, we will still be $2.7 million uh, short on revenue. Again, we are adjusting capital projects, adjusting operations to, to address that. You would think that, uh, or it would appear that if our water sales are down, then our water production would be down. And we would have uh, big savings in our chemical costs for treating water, as well as our power costs for pumping water. Uh, while there is some offset, it's, it's not really that much because when our volumetric usage goes down, we have to increase the amount of flushing we do to ensure the quality level of the water. And I know that a lot of y'all have noticed over the last two years, 
a lot of fire hydrants running uh, for extended periods of time. That is the reason we do that. If, we're, if there is a slow demand, then we have to force a turnover of the water in our elevated storage tanks in order to ensure that the chlorine residuals stay up and the water quality stays high. Uh, this is a couple of slides that are very similar to the last two, or a couple of charts that are similar to the last two that show budget versus actual revenue for 2010 and 2011. Uh, I picked these two because 2010 was kind of a, a normalized year. We got the right amount of rainfall and typical distribution patterns that we would see in this area. And you can see that our revenue uh, came in at $157,000 over what we had budgeted. Uh, but at that time, we were budgeting $26 million. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty good estimate uh, to start off in April of the previous year and, and hit your numbers that close. Uh, 2011 is up here because 2011 was an extremely dry year. If y'all recall, I think we had almost 40 days, consecutive days of over 100 degrees. We saw Lake Tyler drop eight feet that year. Uh, that is not a historical low. The historical low on Lake Tyler came in 2006 when it dropped eight and a half feet. But uh, in 2011, it dropped eight feet. Uh, it was extremely hot for extended periods of time. Our water sales were much greater. And uh, we recovered about $4.7 million than had been budgeted. So during dry years, we do make revenue that exceeds our budget amount. Uh, again, what we had accumulated in cash reserves through that process we spent in 2014 repairing the dam at Lake Tyler. Uh, this is a slide that kind of shows where we're at. Uh, this shows our starting fund balances for uh, 2015 and projects our expenditures through 2015 as well as into 2016. The key component to take from this slide is the red number in the lower right-hand corner. If you walk through all of these, our 90-day surplus reserve, which is what we need to for our um, bond debt, uh, our bond reserves, as well as our operating reserves as mandated by the city charter, uh, reaches a negative $4.4 million. That's if we do the regulatory projects that we're committed to the TCQ to finish by October of 2016, operating the system and so forth. But that's the, the red flag that there's an issue that needs to be addressed. So how are we going to address that issue? What we have proposed to City Council is uh, several modifications to our rate structure. The first is to take the 5% franchise fee that the utility pays to the general fund uh, and make that a line item on the water bill. Every utility, whether it's gas, telephone, electric, water utilities that operates within the city of Tyler and uses the street right of ways pays a 5% franchise fee to the utility fund. Solid Waste Department pays a 5% franchise fee to the utility fund. If you look at your bill today, the solid waste franchise fee is listed as a line item. What we are proposing to do is to take the 5% franchise fee of the water system and add it to the bill as a line item. This is not a rate increase, but it is equivalent to a 5% rate increase because we have reduced our expenses by 5%, and 5% uh, equates to about $1.7 million. Uh, the second thing that we are proposing is a flat increase to the base rates to cover the cost of regulatory compliance. Uh, this proposed increase is $0.58 cents per month on the base water rate and $0.58 cents per month on the base sewer rate. Uh, this is a chart that we use to compare the city of Tyler utility rates. This is a list of cities that have historically in our budget presentations been used for this comparison purposes. 
If you look up there today, the 10,000 gallon consumer is for pay is paying $63.98 for water and sewer. That's based on 10,000 gallons and we use that number because that's where we cap the sanitary sewer charges. Okay, after the proposed increases that I've just outlined, that combined charge would increase to $68.42. But if you look at the chart, under today's rates, we are the second lowest city on that comparison table. And after the changes that we are proposing, we will remain the second lowest city on that comparison table. Uh, and that is not taking into account any of the other cities on this table having rate increases. We know that there are several cities on here that have either already proposed rate increases or are wrapping up rate studies to develop rate increases. The second or the third thing that we are proposing to do is to issue revenue bonds in the amount of $6 million to cover the cost of the TCEQ regulatory compliance projects for fiscal year 2016. Uh, these projects include a backwash supply modification at the Golden Road Water Treatment Plant, as well as three booster stations located one at Jan Street, which is actually an upgrade of an existing booster station. Uh, the installation of a new Barber Street booster station and the Glenwood Old Noonday Road booster station. This is to address areas of the city where pressure is dropping down and approaching the state minimum requirements for pressure. Uh, we would propose to issue this new $6 million in bond in conjunction with a refunding of our 2005 bond series that we were planning to do later this year. If we implement the uh, changes, the modifications to the rate structures that we have proposed, as you can see from this slide, that previous number in the lower right-hand corner that was a negative $4.4 million will become a positive $2.3 million and will start rebuilding the cash reserves for Tyler Water Utilities. The importance of those cash reserves is to improve that bond rating, which saves us a tremendous amount of money as we go forward and do additional regulatory projects or as we need to build new water treatment plants and our new wastewater treatment plants. What would this do to our customers? Uh, this is a little chart right here that shows that it uh, outlines the cost that our customers could expect to see. If you are that minimum use customer, that you do not use more than 2,000 gallons a month, so all your water bill ever is based on is the base rate, you could expect to see a $2.50 increase in your water bill. Uh, if you use 5,000 gallons, if you consume 5,000 gallons of water per month, you could expect to see an increase of $3.33. If you are that 10,000 gallon customer, which is closer to the average number for our customer base, uh, your increase would be $4.71. And that's on your total bill. Uh, this is a chart of our top 10 customers, uh, what the impact would be to them. Uh, Delic is our largest water customer. And as you can see here, the total combined increase of water and wastewater uh, for them is about 20, uh, I'm sorry, about $6,300. If you go down and look at our 10th largest customer, which is Aramark, the combined increase for them would be about uh, $400. This is an excerpt from a presentation that was made by uh, our financial advisors um, here at the last city council meeting. Uh, again, it outlines the advantages here of what we're trying to accomplish and apologize for turning around. But, uh, the first one is that the city of Tyler has the opportunity to refund those 2005 bonds and save a substantial amount of money over the life of those bonds. 
Um, in addition, um, we're planning to issue the new $6 million worth of debt to uh, address the regulatory compliance issues that we have. Uh, the numbers that are in this is based upon uh, uh, bond rates uh, that, that were uh, in place in 2000, uh, July 10th of 2015, and the bonds will be on parity with the outstanding 2011-2012 bond. Uh, this one's a little hard to read again for me at the back. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but the main thing is that this number right here, $4.3 million by refinancing the bonds, which is $24 million worth of bonds, by refinancing $24 million over the life of the bonds, we will save $4.3 million in interest. Uh, and that's why we want to move forward with the refinancing of the bonds. Uh, we have an opportunity to split this into two bond packages. The first bond issue we're calling Series 2015A. The second one, ironically, we're calling it 2015B. Um, the first one would be uh, is $8.9 million. Uh, that will, the reason we're splitting it is we have an opportunity to do, the, to, to do $9 million as bank qualified, and that gives banks the opportunity to bid on our bonds, which helps us in, in uh, selling them. The second one is the remainder of the $30 million, and it's uh, $22.2 .2 million that we would be selling just as a normal tax-exempt municipal revenue bond. Our schedule, uh, we've already made this presentation to council, as I said earlier, our uh, financial advisors have, that are assisting us in this bond uh, packaging has, have made two presentations to city council with the last one being last week on August the 12th. We are looking at uh, moving forward and pricing the, uh, we've already received the rating back from Standard and & Poor's and that goes back to the AAA uh, underlying debt, uh, senior debt, as well as the AA plus bond rating on the remainder of our debt. Uh, on August the 25th, we're going to, uh, we're proposing to price uh, the 2015 A series bond. Then on September the 10th, we're going to price the 2015 B series bond. Uh, in order to make it two separate bond issues, you have to price them separately uh, with 15 days separating the two pricings. Uh, then if everything goes good on September the 29th, we're planning on closing on both of them at the same time. While we have to price them separate to keep them as separate bond issues, we can close them out together at the same time. That is a, an overview of Tyler Water Utilities capital improvement plans and what we are planning to do to address the capital needs of Tyler Water Utilities as we go into the future. Uh, Mr. Mayor, or is that Terry? Yeah, yeah. No, well, um, Patty. Yes. Is, is, Let's is go. You? Is everybody still awake? Yeah, Patty's got the question. We got a lot. Of, really? We got a lot of questions. Good. Come on. Most questions we have ever generated. Good. Go yeah. If we don't get to your question, we can hold these guys hostage and you can ask them personally, okay? But they may have a yeah, point. He, 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 he can be here to answer, but I'll try to answer some too. Martin, you don't really want to try to get past me. No, I'm not going to get past you. <laughs> okay. Richard's here. Okay, ask the question. That has nothing to do with it. Let's go, Patty. <laughs> Recent impression about Tyler Water funding increases. During the record springtime 2015 rainfalls, water utilities increased water consumption rates. The timing for these increases is suspicious. It appears that this is mismanagement of budgeting when you have to execute capital bond finding. Isn't there a short shortage of cash reserve budgeting? Uh, I'll let Greg answer some, but I, I want to get to, to the, the heart of the issue, really. 
<clears throat> we, we had uh, $10 million on Lake Tyler. That was basically the six and a half million that was cash. Um, I, I, as long as, as, as far as I'm looking at it, I, I don't really care about the short term uh, issues at all. It's all about long term. Uh, we have an aging system in this community. Uh, some of the pipes that are in the ground are 100 years old. And the fact of the matter is, uh, we're going to have to maintain the system. And uh, Greg was awful nice about when he said, if, if we wish to do something that the TCEQ is requiring for water, and we wish we could do something for with the EPA. Uh, he mentioned something about a 2016 deadline. Uh, we have that amount of work to do for the TCEQ that is not an optional item for the city of Tyler. Uh, the EPA does not allow us to have optional items. Uh, so uh, 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 good luck to Joanne on uh, who we elect is going to make a difference uh, when it comes to what the EPA says we're going to do and what the TCEQ says we're going to do. So from a long-term perspective, it's a short-term issue. We can just turn around and say, uh, Lake Tyler, six and a half million dollars in cash. Uh, that was not expected, and another three and a half million in the bond deal. Uh, the actual projections, and as we do water rates, uh, that has to be factored. Uh, actually, factoring in rainfalls is going to be impossible. But the main thing is we have to have adequate funding to take care of an old system. Lake Tyler wouldn't be faulty unless it was so old that we hadn't done the proper maintenance over time. Uh, when you have to do work on Lake Tyler Dam, uh, as we like to refer to it, you have to do the, 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 the damn work. Uh, we don't have a choice. Uh, and, and that's exactly what we did. And I will tell you that uh, a lot of the TCEQ requirements are on old lines, and because we continue to, ex and you tell me if I'm wrong on this, but as you continue to expand the system, the water is not getting pumped properly, and the level that the TCEQ says is the proper level that you have to have in water, we're gonna have to do more pumper stations. And that is not optional on our part to decide when we do that, by the way. The TCEQ, it mandates when that happens. Uh, the EPA is not asking us in a very nice fashion on how we're going to do wastewater improvements. I mean, it, it, uh, we are going through a process with them right now that is extremely detailed, and even when I, as a business person, would love to say, that yes, we're gonna put this off for five more years. We're just not gonna do this because the revenue's not coming in. I, we're trying that with the EPA and the TCEQ and it ain't working very well. <laughs> so, and, 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 and not to be rude when I say this, but as we always hear, certain stuff runs downhill and we're at the bottom of the hill. Because we're the city of Tyler. We're not, nobody's asking us, do you want to do this or don't want to do this? We have a, that list of 13 million, the other one of 14 million is a must. And I'm telling you, the EPA has just gotten started on us. That 14 million ain't gonna be enough. So if I don't have revenue coming in, then I don't have the position that I can say that I'm using some cash because then I'm gonna to have to go to all debt. And whenever you maintain your current system, you better be using cash. If you're in a private business and you have trucks or any sort of equipment that you use in your business, you better be paying cash to take care of those items. But if you're looking at long-term growth of customers, like a water utility system where you're building a $30 million wastewater system, then you do debt. 
but we're getting caught into the position in this community because of the demands on us from EPA and TCEQ that we're going to have to start using debt to do those repairs. I don't want to do it. I want to use cash when it comes to our current system. And that means we're all going to pay more for water. I live in this town. I'm paying more. My businesses are going to pay more. But I do not want to incur debt on that kind of work. Sorry. That's just what, where we are. And so Greg, Greg's very nice, polite business guy, right? That runs our water utilities. And so he's a lot nicer than me. Uh, and, and I will tell you that uh, as a business person, I, I'm, I'm committed to doing the right thing. I mean, it's going to, it's, yes, we're going to raise rates. So go ahead and ask me another question. This one's for the city manager. What have you done in the last year to improve street, as in non-brick, patch repair? As an engineer, I have observed street repair teams that are untrained and incompetent in maintaining our streets. However, I've observed some improvement during the past year that you've been here. Please continue to raise the standard for quality street patch repairs. I guess that was more of a comment. Okay. Wait. <laughs> How are we going to protect the city's infrastructure against an EMP attack? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Can I, can I answer one question real quick? Uh, that, 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 that whole brick thing got made me mad the other day when that story came out, and I called the city manager, I called everybody. When, when they start saying $15 a square foot, when you replace bricks, you only do it in square feet. You're not doing a whole big area. That brick sits there for hundreds of years, and you might have to repair 25, 30 square feet. But when you start overlaying an asphalt for a dollar a foot, like they were saying, well, you got to do that all the time. And you can't do just 25 square feet. I mean, you've got to do thousands of square feet at a time. So that costs more money. So if you got the bricks on the street that have been there for 100 years and it can be there 100 more, hell of a lot cheaper to do a little maintenance on them. Sorry, that made me mad. <laughs> One of the reasons you are increasing water rates is because of the wet spring in the early summer, which drastically cut water usage. I understand this. My question is, if we get a severe drought next summer, will you decrease the rates as your income will lose above your projections? Uh, <clears throat> the answer, uh, simple answer to that question is no. Uh, as we go forward, there are going to be more and more capital improvements and capital investment that has to be made into the utility system. The mayor was talking about the water system where you've got same issues with uh, the wastewater system. You have aging infrastructure that's increasing the amount of what they call inflow and infiltration. This is groundwater that gets into the system that takes up valuable capacity. That has to be eliminated. These are ongoing issues that we are going to have to address. And as we go forward in the future, there will be additional rate increases, not decreases. I think that's important that with the, when you have the warmer, hotter summers, what you're able to do is be able to then increase your cash reserve in order to deflect some of the upcoming increases that are going to happen. So it kind of shortens the span or the need for some of the future increases when you see that increased revenue that's coming through those lines. Sure. And, and that goes back to what I was saying about the single digit rate increases versus Speaking double digit. Back, please, yes, sir, I'm sorry. That goes back to what I was saying about the single digit rate increases that we have uh, implemented over the years here in Tyler <clears throat> versus double digit rate increases that other cities have to do to address these same type issues. Gentlemen, I'm sorry the time is running out. One o'clock, so people can get back to their work to pay their utility bill. <laughs> and let me tell you one thing: I did go down to the city and met with the, the city manager and, and the utility director. Probably spent a couple hours down there. Went through this whole process. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you turn your faucet on, what do you expect? Water. When you pull the lever on your stool, what do you expect? That's right, and when the mayor says there are a lot of pipes in the ground over 100 years old, he may be leaving here and driving down the road 
and a big 12, 14, 16 inch pipe may burst and they don't have money budgeted for that. So, you know, those things happen. I can tell you, you realize at 2084 that the city of Tyler has sufficient water available? You name me a city in East Texas or anywhere in the state of Texas that probably has water reserved for the next 10 or 15 years. Go around and see some of these cities are finding. Look at the city of Dallas. They'll buy water from anybody. They take water out of Lake Palestine or well, they have it reserved there. The utility system over the years has been operated, I can tell you, in my opinion, extremely sufficient. And we had it before, before Greg, Greg worked with him, Mr. Malley uh, had the foresight to go uh, purchase a lot of water reserves <coughs> but for the benefit, maybe not of you, and maybe not of your children, but your grandchildren. You should be appreciative of that. And let me tell you, uh, it's a guesswork making a budget because you don't have any earthly idea you go, go from past statistical information. And I think we want to say thank you to the mayor, to City Manager Broussard and, and Mr. Uh, Morgan to come and give us this presentation on the back of the table. is a question and answer sheet. I think it's a couple, three sheets that Greg brought with him. And he says, these are questions that people have called in and asked out that their answers are there. So pick one up. There's enough for everyone here to have a copy. And also, uh, Mr. Hughes and Mr. Hunter will be in the back, back there if you would like to consult with them, work on their projects, or ask them questions. They're there to do it. I don't know if the mayor, if y'all have. I'll stay, I'll stay up here. Okay, okay. If you want to stay, where did Patty go? She evaporated. I bet she had to go back to work. I bet she took the questions. Okay, Patty? She said she's not going to let me buy it. Good. Where, where are the questions? You told me we were through it. I said, let me check. Oh, no. <laughs> and let me have them. Don't let it tell you it's a woman that changes her mind. Oh, thank you. Mayor Ernie. Well, the mayor decided that he would stay. Y'all stay as long. And, and, and Mr. Moore, man. I can, I can stay for a while. Well, let me tell you, this is the most questions we've ever generated on a subject. Well, there's more questions about the street. <laughs> okay, Mr. Morgan, how did God lead you to your career with the city of Tyler for 20 years? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? <laughs> how did God lead you to your career with the city of Tyler for 20 years? It says, as, as you were speaking, the main thing, you, your passion and your knowledge. I, I can, can, I can uh, give him great knowledge. I don't know whether I work with him. What if every child in Tyler was pre prepared educationally to pursue their passion and their area of interest? Yeah, it's really fascinating to me that uh, we have two Aggies up here. I didn't know they did education. <laughs> did I say that? Yeah. Is that on camera? Good. Well, I, I, my, my career path started out uh, at Texas A&M University. Uh, I, I was a consulting engineer in San Antonio for, uh, for a long time, uh, up until about 1994. Uh, at that time, my wife and I decided that we needed to move back to East Texas. I'm from Tyler. She's from Jacksonville. Uh, God offered, opened up an opportunity for us to move back to East Texas to be with our family and help take care of aging parents. Uh, Mr. Clark was city manager at the time and uh, uh, had the foresight to hire me as city engineer. After about uh, six months as city engineer, I realized life was better in an enterprise fund than it is in the general fund, and <laughs> transferred to Tyler Water Utilities and have been there for the last 20 years. And, and, can I ask him a question? Go ahead. Would you, would you please uh, share with everyone who your wife, family is in Jacksonville, and who her brother is? Oh. Do you mind? Yeah. First off, uh, I don't know 
uh, Neil McCoy, the country western singer, is a uh, brother to Barbara Morgan, my wife, who is minister at First Christian Church in Jacksonville, Texas. Uh, but yeah, we that's part of, uh, they grew up in East uh, Jacksonville, in East Texas, and uh, actually we went, and I was in Bossier City last night watching him perform until 1 o'clock. Okay, next question. <laughs> Uh, where do we rank in the state on water rates? They, I don't think they could see the, the graph, but I think it's number two. Is that right? Uh, Second lowest? Well, of the cities that we compare ourselves to, there, there was a slide that showed a comparison chart. And those are representative cities that are about our size. Uh, we compare, we are the second lowest rates across uh, the state out of those cities. Uh, we expanded that, that list for the newspaper here back uh, right before they made the budget presentation. And out of the expanded list of cities that they picked <clears throat> for us to look at, I think we were the fourth lowest. So we have an extremely reasonable rate structure in Tyler, Texas, and, but we do have to uh, adjust it to ensure that we generate the revenue necessary to manage the capital improvements, the infrastructure investments, as well as the operation and maintenance to ensure that we have the highest quality water for our customers. At, uh, at times, Tyler's water changes in its smell and taste. Why? Uh, there are a number of factors that come into play there. <clears throat> Most lakes turn over during, do what they call turnover. There's a temperature inversion that causes the water at the bottom to come to the top and the water at the top to go to the bottom. That has an impact on taste and odor. <clears throat> we also have uh, uh, algae type uh, product in Lake Palestine that's called geosmin. And geosmin can be detectable to sensitive people at levels as low as seven nanogram per liter. And that's like parts per trillion an infinitesimal amount may be noticeable. Uh, we can do a 99% removal rate, but we can't get down to those levels on removal. So if we see an increase in that, we will notice a taste and odor. Uh, as we uh, see inversions at the lake, that causes the problem also. Uh, right now we're doing a free chlorine conversion throughout the city of Tyler. We did that last fall, as you, most of you may recall. This is to improve and ensure and stabilize the water quality in our pipes. Uh, and that has the potential of causing the taste and odor also. The main thing to remember is that we test the water constantly around the clock at the treatment plants and out through the distribution system. We pull samples to ensure that our chlorine residuals stay high and the, what ta uh, the taste and odor are aesthetics issues. Uh, as is the discoloration, and the water remains safe to consume at all times. True or false? Those not watering their lawns are subsidizing those that do. <laughs> well, that would act, <clears throat> that would actually be your reason for base, base rate increase instead of water, water maintenance. That is correct. Uh, it, it is the base rate increase shifts more of our revenue to a level participation across the city so that everybody's paying closer to the same. Then you're still going to see if that, you want to consume That's the only reason I bought into this. Yes. Yes. Because I understood that. <laughs> and as we still have the volume metric, so as you use more water, you, you pay more water. But that's why we include 2,000 gallons in our base rate. 2,000 gallons is about the minimum uh, consumption practical for, for most people. Uh, if normal household use is less than 10,000 gallons, can the sanitary cap be lowered? Uh, studies have shown that the 10,000 gallon cap is about where we see the the increase for irrigation water starting, that our average customer during the winter months is using that 10,000 gallons, and that's how we establish that 10,000 gallon cap. Yeah. There is no cap on commercial. I'm sorry. I, good point, Mr. Mayor. 
Uh, commercial pays 100% sewer on the water consumed. Even if it is for Yes. And I, I pay more. How much uh, in dollars was spent running water to I-20? The city of Tyler annexed an area uh, up in the vicinity of Interstate 20, or we annexed all the way up to Interstate 20, um, or just shy of it. But uh, uh, we, ex we extended a 24-inch water main along Interstate 20 as the backbone infrastructure. Uh, to serve that annex area. That water line cost us five, right, five million dollars, a little over five million dollars. And um, it was actually budgeted and planned when we were planning it to cost closer to eight million dollars. Um, the, the sanitary sewer going to Interstate 20 uh, cost about five million also, and it was originally estimated about six. That difference between what we actually paid for those projects versus what we had budgeted is where the additional bond revenue, bond funds came from that we added to our cash reserves to complete the Lake Tyler uh, rehabilitation project. I think a lot of these questions I've seen now have been answered. Uh, when you leave, there's a, there's a stack of questions and answers back there. Please uh, pick those up. Let's thank uh, Mr. Mark and for a great presentation and the mayor. Thank, thank y'all for coming, giving us your time. And we look forward to seeing y'all again. God bless you. Appreciate it.